Hi, I'm John Foley, the Executive Director of Project Drawdown, the world's leading resource for climate solutions. And today I want to talk to you about the Drawdown Roadmap, a new approach to implementing climate solutions based on science. And science is important because it's what we use to help understand and predict the world around us. And science has actually been crucial in understanding climate change and warning us about its potential impacts. In fact, the science of climate change goes back to the middle of the 19th century, when scientists first predicted that increasing levels of so-called greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, would cause a warming impact on our planet, shifting our climate into a new regime. And as greenhouse gases increased from the 1900s through to the early 21st century, we in fact have seen a warming of our planet of about one degree Celsius so far. And that may not sound like a lot, only one degree. But the last ice age, where this planet was covered in ice caps and fundamentally different than today, was only about three degrees colder than normal. We're already one degree warmer than normal and growing into the future. And it's starting to have an impact, not only in our thermometers, but on our landscapes, our water resources, our food systems, and even things like glaciers here in Alaska, where Muir Glacier now has to be renamed on the maps to Muir Lake. So science has been a critical part of understanding the problem of climate change, and maybe can help us find the way out of the problem and focusing on solutions. But as we think about solutions to climate change, we're certainly seeing a lot of activity here today and a lot of different competing claims and agendas out there. For example, go on Twitter on any given day and you'll find lots of very confident people telling you that they have the answer to climate change and we're very happy to sell it to you. But how do you know which one is the right one or maybe which mix of solutions will work best? Well, that's again where science can help guide us by looking at the solutions and asking which ones are the most effective, which ones are available now, and what are they gonna cost? And are there any trade-offs we have to be mindful of as we implement these solutions into the coming decades? So science can guide us in our way forward and point a direction for success. And that's what Project Drawdown's been all about for the last few years. We've been using science to look at the world's proposed climate solutions, and we evaluate each and every single one of them in terms of their effectiveness, whether they're available now, and what they might cost in the future. Not surprisingly, things like solar energy are shown to work incredibly well. Solar, whether it's on our rooftops or maybe utility scale solar out in large fields, is a proven renewable energy solution and today is the cheapest form of energy humanity's ever created. So this is a very good climate solution. Another good climate solution, maybe a little surprising to some folks, is tackling food waste. That's because food and agriculture and the land use it uses and all that is responsible for about a quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. But we throw away about a third of all the food in the world. If we didn't throw away a third of the food, maybe it doesn't have to emit so much greenhouse gases. So tackling food waste turns out to not only be a food solution, it's also a climate solution. Another climate solution that surprised folks was the importance of social interventions, especially things like educating girls and enhancing family planning. What we find here is, of course, these are for people first, elevating the lives of women and girls around the world. Absolutely, do this for people, for equity, for justice. But when you do that for people first, it turns out it can have a longer term climatic benefit as well. So we have kind of a win-win solution for people and the planet at the same time. So what we've learned so far from looking at the solutions out there using science is that first, there are lots of solutions available today. In fact, they're abundant. You can go everywhere in the world and find great climate solutions that work right now and work effectively. We also know that most of the climate solutions we need are here today. We don't have to wait for them. We can start implementing solutions right now and get a good step ahead on fighting climate change. And that's a really good thing. And Project Drawdown has done the work of cataloging all of the viable and effective climate solutions so you can know which ones work and which ones don't and which ones we could get started with today. And we've built what we call the Solutions Library, where we assembled all the important solutions, all the ones that could work today, sector by sector. For example, solutions here in electricity, looking at ways we can conserve electricity 
but also making it differently using renewable energy or non-carbon emitting energy sources, moving away from fossil fuels. Those are available today too, and that's incredibly exciting. We also find solutions in the food sector, looking at solutions that reduce food waste, shift diets to low carbon food sources, but also farming differently while protecting ecosystems from being cleared. We can also look at solutions, for example, in transportation that maybe reduce the amount of transportation we need by having more walkable cities or using video conferencing instead of flying. Those are great, but also how we can use things like electric vehicles, mass transit, and new forms of transportation that can reduce emissions there as well. All together, the Solutions Library presents about 100 different climate solutions that are ready to go right now and are viable today. But this Solutions Library only describes the potential solutions, what could be in the future, what's possible. But it doesn't tell us how we're going to implement them and scale them out into the world, how to make them real and exist now. In a way, it's kind of like we wrote a coffee table book describing the food around the world. Hey, this looks great. This is delicious. This is amazing. But it doesn't yet tell you how to make that dish. What we need now is to replace that with a cookbook, a recipe book that shows you step by step how to make that delicious food that we just saw. Maybe step one, grease the pan. Step two, chop the onions. Step three, boil the water, that kind of thing. We need that for climate change, a cookbook that describes the recipes. So that's why we're building the so-called Drawdown Roadmap. It's gonna use science not only to describe the solutions we have, but show you step-by-step step how to implement them and scale them out into the world. And this roadmap is gonna be useful for everyone, whether you're a government or a community organization at different sizes from local to state, federal or beyond, it's also going to be useful for businesses who are going to be crucial in addressing climate change. Or useful for investors and philanthropists who are going to be critical in deploying the money and other resources we need to combat climate change in the future. So what we have now is really kind of an incredible moment where we have numerous climate solutions that are ready to go, and now we know how to implement them. So together, we can start to face this enormous challenge of climate change that is incredibly serious and we can step up and transform the world around us, replacing old systems that don't work very well with new ones that work better and protect our planet and build a more livable future. We can create new ways of doing things, entire new paradigms of how the world could work and work better. And altogether, not just address climate change, we can build a better world while we're at it. But along the way, we have to make sure that we're using science to guide us in the right direction so we know what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And that's what the Drawdown Roadmap's gonna give us moving into the future. In the next three units, we're gonna do three different things. First, we're gonna describe the science we need to understand to even build this roadmap for implementing climate solutions. Then we're gonna show the roadmap, which is based in five different parts, kind of five dimensions of how we can implement climate solutions into the future. And then finally, we're going to show how the roadmap can be used by different groups around the world to work collaboratively to address climate change and build a better future out into the world. Taken together, we now have the tools we need to understand and address climate change by working together, implementing solutions we have today, and following a new science-based roadmap out into a better future. Mm -hmm.